Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome down to Tech Tuesday, your weekly look at everything to do with technology within golf. And what we're going to be looking at today is launch monitors from high to low with an exciting announcement which has just come out from Bridgestone. The Kirkland signature from Costco coming back into circulation which will get many golf ball fans extremely excited. The new Galvin Green Gear being launched and the new Callaway Shore Out Wedge. First things first, launch monitors, because this is something I get asked about so, so much, what my opinion is on launch monitors and stuff that you can buy for reasonable amounts of money. Within the last couple of years, so many companies are getting involved with bringing out launch monitor technology. It's been amazing the creation and the explosion within this part of the industry over recent years. And you go to the top of the tree, so you've got your Trackmans, you've got your flight scopes, the new X3, and then you've got the GC Quad. Those are the real three leaders in the field. Arguments can be made as to which one of those three is the best, but there's no doubt that they are also the most expensive. So the new flight scope, the GC Quad and the Trackman, you're looking over £12,000 for those units. And that's why you only generally see those in the hands of teaching professionals, because they know if they buy one of those and they use it in their lessons, they can advertise that they're using launch monitors within their sessions, they can make their money back. The only people who've been buying those for personal use have a lot of cash. <laughs> The type of cash that could include buying a simulator and installing it at home, and that's not realistic for so many people. So when you look at ways of how to improve your game, outside taking lessons, getting a launch monitor, understanding your club data and ball data a little bit better is a next step. And now in the marketplace of recognized launch monitors, you can go down to about $200 all the way up to the top end boys that I've just mentioned. These things include the ES12 from Ernest Sports, the Voice Caddy, the Flysco Mevo, which has just come out. And each of these launch monitors has their use. The one thing you'd say is the lower the price, the less club data you get. And it's mainly based on ball data, which can reveal some things, but if you're really looking to get down into the nitty gritty, you do need the club head data as well. But things have taken another turn as Bridgestone have just released the Be Fit app. So just to give you a little bit of blurb about this app and just a little bit of an explanation about what it does, Bridgestone has said it's taken five years to develop and what it does is it fits you for a golf ball. Obviously Bridgestone golf balls, but it fits you for a golf ball. And what Bridgestone is saying is that this app will transform, in their own words, every golfer's mobile into a ball tracking device. And it does that by recording the user's swing, analyzes it to, prov to provide swing speed, ball speed, the launch angle, the carry distance, and the total distance of those shots. Now Bridgestone now say that this app is available on iOS devices. I have just tried to download it and I have not been successful. Apparently I'm on the UK iTunes store and it won't let me download it off the US iTunes store. So I can't do a proper test, but I would like you guys to try this. If you are in the States, let me know how it goes. But looking through the pictures of the app, it looks interesting, if not a slightly fiddly in some respects. So you have to record the video, then go back into the video and start drawing where the ball starts, where it finishes, and then it starts to calculate all the different velocities. So it's not as simple as simply putting this up by the ball and it will give you all the data straight away. You then also have to put the shot shape in which has occurred. So this sits by the side of the player, not looking down the line of the shot. And then he goes on to recommend a ball, a Bridgestone ball, based on what you've inputted and what the data shows. And looking at this app, guys, if I'm being honest with you, I can't get overly excited because Bear in mind, this is very much just geared towards not improving the golfer, it's geared towards selling golf balls. And there's no real way of being able to tell how accurate this is. The only way you've been able to do it is getting it and comparing it to a very accurate launch monitor. So let's say a GC Quad or a Trackman or a Flightscope, one of the top boys, and actually doing them side by side to see if it's even within a margin of what it's saying on the actual launch monitor. But what I am excited about is the fact that this marks another change within the golf launch monitor market. Because since I've got my new iPhone, I have to say I am stunned at the things that you can do in it, especially with the camera quality. Now, as far as what I do with obviously YouTube and all the rest of it, it makes my life a hell of a lot easier. And the camera quality and the slow-mo recording on the camera is so good that something like this I think potentially could be the start of something, a new wave of apps which is coming our way to help with personal launch monitor technology. 
Most of the launch monitors which are out there at the moment in time use Doppler radar to help track the ball flight. So you're looking at the track man, the flight scopes, they are using radar to look where the ball has gone and then pull all the information back. It then uses calculations to extrapolate ball speeds and all the rest of it. The more top end flight scopes also have club head monitors in there as well. Although they can't tell where strike is, they can give a better idea of what's happened to the club through impact. Now the one exception on the launch monitor market at this moment in time is the GC Quad or the GC2 and the HMT if you're thinking about the last few years because that actually takes pictures at impact. So it sits just to the side of the golf and takes lots of pictures at impact and when you've got the reflected dots on the face it actually sees where the club face is coming into impact, it sees the strike location and then calculates everything based on those things. So ball speeds, where the club head is and all the other fancy data. Now the GC Quad, GC2, HMT, they are very specifically designed units. They do what they say on the tin. You can't pick it up and make a phone call on it. But with the quality of the camera on the new phones now, I can see in a very short period of time, someone developing an app which can sit behind the player, actually start to track the ball flight within its first few feet automatically, and then start giving data. But guys, love to know what you think. Please comment below. If you can download this and have a go, let me know, then that would be wonderful. But what can you see coming next? What can you see people developing and ideas? If you don't want to give them away, keep it to yourself. That's absolutely fine. Just put a little copyright next to it. I promise I won't steal it. Maybe. But what do you think is going to be the next step? Using one of these, how can these be used to help golfers more? There's lots of different golf apps out there already. So your Game Golf, your My Round Pros, all these kind of apps and all these stat making machines that are out there. So I get a bit excited. But what do you think is going to be next? Next up, the Kirkland Signature Ball appears to be back. Kind of. May have changed a little bit, possibly. It was one of the biggest stories of last year. So Costco brought out this ball, the Kirkland Signature, and it sold out almost instantane instant instantaneously? instantaneously when golfers realized how good the performance was. It was a tour performance golf ball at a fraction of the cost of, say, a Pro V1. And there's a lot of questioning because it sold out very, very quickly, and yet Costco didn't restock it. So questions were being asked, why would a product which sells so well not be instantly restocked? But there has just been registered with the USGA and approved by the USGA, it's on the conforming list, that there's two new golf balls, Kirkland Signature Performance 1 and the Kirkland Signature Tour Performance. Now we won't know until we start cutting the new ball open to see exactly what the construction is, but certainly last year the Nassau Quattro and the Kirkland Signature, when you looked at them, they were pretty much identical. So are they going to be the same? Is it going to be the same thing where Nassau are producing these balls or at least they're being produced in the same factory? But whatever happens when these hit the shelves again you can bet that a lot of golfers are going to want to stock up and buy a lot of them going into the future. The new Galvin Green Gear has been launched. I was up in Scotland early last week and the organisers of the event were actually a little bit annoyed it didn't rain so we couldn't properly test out the waterproofness of the waterproof clothing. But with Galvin Green, it's a high-end manufacturer, you can be pretty sure that it is going to be a great waterproof suit. It's the same type of technology that was put into what the European Ryder Cup team were wearing last year and that we will be wearing next year. We will be. Slip. I'm not going to be in the team, I don't think. And it looked good, new colorways being introduced as well. So if you want more information, just go out to their website and check it out. And on Golf Club News, the Callaway Shore Out Wedge will soon be available to buy. Now these wedges have been produced with input from Hank Haney, who is a character who splits opinion. And this wedge is very much geared at being a high loft, easy to hit golf club. You can get this wedge in a 58 degree or a 64 degree wedge, which if you've ever tried to hit a 64 degree wedge, you will know just how much loft it looks like there's on the club. And looking at the wedge, it's not what I would call um, beautiful. I think it's going to be very much geared at players who just want help around the greens. It's got a massive wide sole, which I presume is going to help glide through the surface a little bit easier and get the ball up and out of dodgy lies. Calling the sole the Cleveland Smart Sole, which I don't know how smart it is, but it looks certainly very different. It's also a very different shape. It's much more rounded within the club head when it's positioned behind the ball. I do like Callaway wedges. I'm using Callaway wedges at the moment, but these... I don't think they're going to be totally on my radar, if I'm being honest with you. You do get wedges like this come out quite a bit with this big wide sole. I think it was Alien Golf. Do you remember Alien Golf? 
they had this massive sole wedges and a lot of people did swear by them so if you are looking for a little bit of game improvement within your wedges check it out give it a go let me know what it's like right guys thank you so so much for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already follow me on my other social media platforms as well and we will see you down here next time